So now the bolts are in um, and still loose, but they've got Loctite on them, we can set the backlash. The backlash, um, I've got a 0.06 of a millimetre filler gauge, not sure if you can see that. Um, but what we do is we insert it with these two bolts loose with Loctite on them. We turn the, the top gear clockwise. So I'm turning clockwise, which means here, if you can see where that's pointing, this tooth and this tooth are actually contacting where there's a gap at the back side here because I'm turning it clockwise, the, back, the gap ends up at the back. So I thought I'd just pause and take a quick close-up video uh, to show you what I meant there. So when the top gear is turned clockwise, what happens is this tooth here butts up hard against this tooth here in the transfer gear. So they meet right there where the screwdriver is. They would be um, pushed up hard against each other, which then if you're turning clockwise, which we were, it would create a gap at the back side of this tooth of the transfer gear tooth. So there's a gap between the transfer gear tooth here and this tooth here, which is the top gear. So the feeler gauge gets inserted between these two. So again, this tooth would be hard up against here, but then would be, there would be a gap between this tooth and this tooth. And so in there is where the feeler gauge should be uh, placed. So I insert, I've cut the feeler gauge down, you can see uh, into a shape that will fit. So I insert it into the back side of that. And the reason it's on an angle like that is because of the helical cut gear. So that's normal. And then what I do now is with this 0.06 millimeter filler gauge in there, I get underneath the transfer gear plate and give it a little, I can see that closing up. I'm, and you don't want to go overboard. And then you want to feel the drag. So I'm, I'm a little bit tight there. So I come down a tiny bit. Yeah, so I can go, I can go in and out there. That's in and out. And I can feel there's a little bit of drag, but not too much. And that's where we want to be. So now I can withdraw the feeler gauge. And we can tighten these two bolts up and I'll do that up with a ratchet in a second. And that's how you install the transfer gear plate and set the backlash. And now we'll go ahead and uh, put this nut on and the washer and then we'll stake that over so again 35 millimeter socket so just on that point too the the backlash between this gear and this gear is set from factory because the spigot is part of the transfer gear plate you can't actually set the backlash between these two gears that's set now this will go in um, this gear will actually tap in a bit so it's more level with that but depending on the shims on the front of the diff pinion shaft, when someone set the pinion depth, will depend on where this gear ends up. So if this gear isn't lined up 100% with this one, don't stress too much. It means that, um, like I say, this bearing in here is a floating bearing, so it can move in and out, all depending on what shims are used at the front of the diff pinion shaft to set the depth. So again, don't stress too much. This will close up. As you'll see, there's a gap there. That will close up. But if that's not perfectly aligned with this one, uh, don't stress, it could be out maybe, you know, a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. So let's go and get the nut on. And get the 35 millimeter socket. And as you can see, that just took up. So the last one of these we did, the gear, this is important to show, I'll try and point it out with the feeler gauge. There is a tiny little bit of a misalignment there, but that's due to the diff pinion depth being different on each um, transmission by uh, a little bit. So don't stress too much if they are, are not aligned.